welcome to a new in the mail the most popular segment hosted here on the channel once again lots of interesting stuff has been gathering in my special mailbag bin so let's get started my first item is a set of these clean room wipers and if you remember in the past i used to get these little green box ones from the real life brand but i couldn't easily find those on a quick aliexpress search so i ended up getting these ones which have a similar cost they're from a different brand but they just look and feel identical and as a side note while i was googling for a picture of the old uh, box of wipers i actually found the aliexpress listing that sells them so in some cases google search can help you to find certain products listed on aliexpress that just don't show up in the aliexpress search itself which has been broken since forever I use these on the workbench prim primarily to wipe off uh, flux residue from PCBs using flux cleaner or just IPA. They do a great job and they are lint free. Their cost has gone up a little bit over the years as with everything else but they're still okay and worth keeping on your workbench as you will no doubt find these useful in your activities. Same as usual, there will be links provided in the description below to all of the products shown in this video. Next up, I got a couple of different styles of these uh, DC barrel jack extension leads. And these have the male connectors on uh, both ends of the cable. And I plan to use these for an upcoming project. I will be making this uh, power distribution unit for my mi microscope setup because right now I have three different power adapters that I need to plug in when using my microscope. One for the LED lights. Uh, a second one for the overhead camera and a third one for the monitor this is annoying and i would like to use like a single power source with a power distribution unit attached to the microscope stand and then split that into three different dc pads to power the three items mentioned earlier now these cables will come in handy uh, to connect between the uh, power distribution unit and the actual uh, camera and the other stuff and I might use these curly ones or the uh, straight ones and just do some cable management to keep them nice and tidy. The sponsor of this video PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. Right now they are running their fifth annual PCB design co contest so if you have some PCB designs that you would like to submit why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes. You could also try them out for many of their other services like 3D printing CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website, link below. Next up, I got a set of these uh, classical DC jack adapters, and these have a standard input barrel jack of uh, 5.5 by 2.5 millimeters, and they adapt to a range of different uh, sizes. Useful for testing various pieces of gear. They're kind of bulky, not the best quality, but you know, for quick testing of. Uh, gear they'll get the job done when you're missing the original adapter for some piece of equipment and another uh, DC jack adapter but this time it takes a USB type C input and converts it to a uh, DC jack uh, but this goes a step further by including the uh, PD trigger the power delivery trigger inside this small adapter and you have to select the uh, desired voltage when ordering and I went with the 12 volt version uh, on this unit so uh, let's give it a quick test we should be seeing 12 volts when uh, this is plugged into a PD capable power adapter and yes it does work as expected so once again a pretty neat way of powering something like an older piece of gear off a USB type C uh, power adapter and what's nice is that they have the voltage marked uh, on the adapter itself so it's easy to keep track of that I'll probably or order the other versions as well because they they also sell these with a variety of DC jack sizes so it's pretty easy to find the right one for your equipment next up I have a short USB extension lead but this time it's with the USB type C male to USB type A female uh, this would be useful to connect something with the classical USB type A to a more modern laptop with USB type C port or even a single board computer which nowadays have started adding USB type C ports so if you still need to connect like external flash memory or sub some sort of USB uh, device uh, with USB type A connector you will need something like this um, so I keep a couple of these around just for cases like that. Also on the USB cables aisle, I got this one, uh, which is a one meter long USB type C on uh, both ends. Uh, one of them is 90 degrees bent 
and it is rated for USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, that's 10 gigabits per second. Uh, it supports up to 100 watts power delivery and 4K video over USB Type-C. Now, because of all of that, this cable is pretty thick and stiff, uh, much stiffer than your typical USB Type-C cable. But I need something like this to use with my 15 inch portable external monitor that I reviewed in Vlog 427. And having this 90 degree connector will make it just much nicer to keep the monitor right next to this side of my laptop. And um, I need the cable to include all of those extra pairs for the video transfer capability. If only I could find something like this that isn't as stiff, that would make my life so much nicer because I don't need that 100 watts PD capability. So for me, it could also work with thinner internal wires for uh, a lower rated power. Next up, I thought it was interesting to show you guys these Y split installation tube options that you can find on AliExpress. They do come in different sizes. They are advertised as to be used for speaker cable, but you can use these pretty much universally to make some neat split connections. And I don't think this is heat shrinkable. And let me quickly try this with a soldering iron to see if it heat shrinks or if it resists heat. So the soldering iron is now at over 300 degrees Celsius. Yeah, this uh, melts right away. So it's not heat shrinkable and it's not really heat resistant. But still, even so, could be a useful thing to have in your toolbox for some wiring jobs that don't need to be uh, tightly heat shrinked or um, don't need to resist high temperatures. Next up, I have another one of these uh, CAT6 termination plugs and you've seen these uh, before uh, in, in previous uh, mail bags. I'm very happy with the quality of, of these uh, termination plugs and how easy it is to uh, work with these. As you may be aware, CAT6 and higher have thicker internal wires, so it's not possible to terminate them with just a classic RJ45 plug because the wires will not fit inside the individual channels. Instead, you have to use one of these plugs, which allow you to crimp the individual wires using just a standard uh, uh, crimping slash punch tool. And these are really useful to keep in your toolbox these days when any new installation will use at least CAT6, if not higher. And this company, although um, comes from China, they seem to have pretty good quality connectors. Next up, I have this weird looking plastic holder. But if you own a Google Nest mini speaker, you'll understand how this can be useful to hold the speaker in this uh, bigger cutout while hanging from its own uh, round power adapter inserted into a wall socket. Now, depending on where you plan to place your speaker, this could be quite a neat and tidy solution. They even have these grooves on the back so you can snake the, uh, the cable so that you don't end up with a mess of wires. So I wanted to give this a try. It's fairly inexpensive. Uh, it comes in a bunch of different colors so that you can match the color of your Google Nest speaker. Next up, I got a set of these uh, small plastic containers. Uh, these are 20 milliliters and um, I like having plastic con containers like these for storing various stuff like smaller quantities of flux or solder paste. Like I can order a half a kilo large jar of solder paste then I could split it into multiple of these smaller containers or even syringes. And, and then instead of using the large jar and getting it out of the freezer every time I need to use it, I can just take a smaller container and not refrigerate it after first usage because it will get used up anyway in a couple of months, which still produces acceptable results at room temperature. And this is just one example where I plan to use these. And uh, yes, I know there is solar paste that is stable at room temperature, but that stuff is kind of expensive. Next, I got myself a nice large diaphragm condenser mic and this is quite heavy. It's a 34 millimeters by 15 millimeters thick and there's also an option for 34 millimeters diameter by 13.5 millimeters uh, thickness with the main difference between the two being the uh, frequency response. This one in 15 millimeter thickness goes between 70 hertz and 15 kilohertz while the 13.5 millimeter model goes between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. At some point I want to give this a try to see how it sounds by just building a preamp for it and maybe connecting into one of those USB DAC chips to have it work like a USB desk microphone. Who knows, maybe I can get some decent quality out of something like this and 
uh, record some voiceovers for my videos or use it during conference calls. I don't know what the OEM of this is. Obviously, it doesn't come with a full data sheet. So yeah, results may vary, but I find it interesting that there are even kits for building like entire enclosures of such a microphone and you'll find these on AliExpress. Next up, uh, here's something very cheap and, and often overlooked uh, these days. It's an ESP8266 module more specifically the 12F module, but this can be very useful in situations where you might want to hack existing hardware to convert it to USB Home or Tasmota. So uh, let me paint you this scenario. There are a bunch of smart gadgets being sold that use the various TUIA based modules or other OEM type modules. And those follow uh, this type of module footprint, but they use a different processor inside. So you can't reflash those with the open source firmers like Tasmota or ESP Home for easy integration of those devices into your home assistant server. However, uh, what you can do is to desolder those modules and solder in an ESP8266 module and now you can flash it with your favorite firmware and integrate it. So that's why I like to keep a, a couple of these around because they can uh, be very handy for hacking existing gadgets. Next up, I have uh, three different sensor modules, which I might be building into this like smart sensing platform at some point and tie them all into an ESP32 uh, to run test mota. But we'll see if I ever get a chance to work on that project. Until then, let me present the sensors that I plan to use. The first one is the MH-Z19D. Uh, this is a CO2 sensor. This is a well-known sensor for measuring CO2. It has a typical range of 400 to 1000 ppm. It has a UART or PWM output, but I will be using the UART interface. It takes a 5 volt power supply in with an average current of no more than 40 milliamps, but with peaks in excess of 100 milliamps, which I assume is due to uh, the internal heater that is using. My next sensor is the SenseAir S8. And once again, this is a CO2 sensor with a similar range of 400 to uh, 10,000 ppm. It has a lower average current. It claims less than 18 milliamps average, but with peaks of up to 300 milliamps. And again, uh, uh, a UART serial interface. The idea was to kind of have these both connected and figure out which one is responding faster to changes in CO2 level and if they agree on the measured value or not. The Sensor S8 is the more expensive one between these two, selling for around $30 a piece. I also got a PM2.5 sensor and the model number on this one is PMS5003 slash G5. Once again, a 5 volt power input takes less than 100 milliamps in active mode and can measure PM2.5 particles with a resolution of 1 microgram per cubic meter within a range of uh, 0 to 500 micrograms per cubic meter. Now, I'll also likely be adding some temperature slash humidity and ambient light sensors to build this complete sensor platform for my uh, uh, smart home. But once again, no ETA on that. One thing is for sure, I now have all of the required parts. So I would just need to design a PCB and an enclosure to hold everything together. Until then, you'll find the link for all of these sensors in the description below. My next item is this inexpensive uh, long head marker, which can be useful in a uh, variety of scenarios where you need this very long and thin head and to make some, uh, some markings. I've had numerous times where I needed to mark a drill point through the actual object, which might have like a thick base and I couldn't do it with a regular marker, but with uh, this one, it should be pretty nice and handy and I will be storing this in my toolbox. That was all for today. I hope it was interesting to watch and please let me know in the comments below if you ordered any of these items. Same as always, links for all of the products shown in this video will be in the description below the video, so do check them out. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month, or you can simply hit that like button, which is free, but helps the channel a lot. I'll be seeing you next week.